Let me show you something. This is Blue Moon. We've been working on this lander for three years. It's a very large lander. It'll soft land in precise way, 3.6 metric tons onto the lunar surface. The stretch tank variant of it will uh, soft land 6.5 metric tons onto the lunar surface. Let me give you a little tour. The deck is designed to be a very simple interface so that a great variety of payloads can be placed onto the top deck and secured. In the Davit system, which is inspired by naval systems, you can see it over here, is what's used to lower things off of the deck onto the surface of the moon. And the Davits can be customized for the particular payloads. We have here as an example a very large rover. And by the way, even though that's a large rover, this vehicle can land four of them simultaneously on the surface of the moon. And if you go ahead and go back up on the deck again, let me, take, let me show you one more, a couple more things up there, some features. On the left-hand side, you can see our star tracker that's so that this vehicle can autonomously navigate in space. There it is. On the right-hand side, you'll see an optical communication system that gives us gigabit bandwidth back to Earth. It's a laser that transmits data back to Earth. We also have X-band for 10 megabit radio. Let's keep going with the tour. Liquid hydrogen. Why are we using liquid hydrogen? This is not how Apollo did it. Why are we using liquid hydrogen as our fuel? A couple of reasons. One, it's very high performance. And so that helps a lot when you're landing on the moon. That's that after you've, you've got to carry all of your propellant to the moon. Second reason we're using liquid hydrogen is because ultimately we're going to be able to get hydrogen from that water on the moon and be able to refuel these vehicles on the surface of the moon and use them. So liquid hydrogen is an excellent choice for fuel for the moon. And we use it three ways on this vehicle. And it's very interesting. The liquid hydrogen, of course, is the fuel for the descent engine, so it powers the descent. But we also use the boil off, so when liquid hydrogen, when heat seeps in through the tank walls, and liquid hydrogen gasifies a little bit, it boils. And that very cold gas is passed around the liquid oxygen tanks to prevent the liquid oxygen from boiling off. So that's the second use of the liquid hydrogen. And then after it has cooled the liquid oxygen tanks, it is uh, pushed into an accumulator where it then powers hydrogen fuel cells. And we chose hydrogen fuel cells for this vehicle rather than solar cells because we want to be able to survive the lunar night, which you can't do with solar cells. The lunar night is two weeks long and it gets very cold. And also, the fuel cells provide a lot of power. It's two and a half kilowatts of power, which would be a very large solar array. Landing gear, they stow in an upward configuration so they can fit into the seven meter payload bay. They deploy, they're designed, the very wide splay angle is designed so that we can land on an incline on the moon of up to 15 degrees, which is a very big incline be able to do that safely. You can't see them, they're underneath here, but we have flash LIDAR, so we can do terrain mapping. There's no GPS on the moon. So if you want to land precisely, and we can land within 75 feet of our target, when you want to land precisely, what you do is you use features on the moon to navigate. Now that we have mapped the entire moon in great detail, we can use those pre-existing maps to tell the system, it's a machine learning system, to tell the system what it should be looking for in terms of craters and other features, and it navigates relative to that. It uses the actual terrain of the moon as guideposts. 
This is an incredible vehicle, and it's going to the moon.